the spot. Why have you come, Inspector Gregson? Surely they serve tea at Scotland Yard. Oh, so sorry. I'm here on behalf of Inspector Lestrade. You see, he needs a little help. Lestrade? Asking for our help? He's at his wit's end. He didn't travel far to arrive there. <laughs> uh, pardon me, sir. I'd... Never mind. What sort of assistance does he require? He'd like you to solve the Thames murders. No, oh, I've been following that one in the London Times. Four bodies found floating in the river over the last week. A five, Dr. Watson. Roland Jacquard was found under the Charing Cross footbridge early this morning. The stepson of Lord Astley Denham? That's the chap. From my understanding, his was a reputation as a mountebank and a ne'er-do-well. And from what I hear, he spent most of his days at the card tables of the Bagatelle Card Club. He was one of the finest whist players in London. And his nights? Uh, spent in the drawing rooms and often bedrooms of some of the best families in London. You mean he was a womanizer? Well, he wasn't a traveling chambermaid, Watson. What of the other murders, Inspector? Any progress there? Uh, no, but Lestrade is still working on the case. Oh, that fills me with confidence. <laughs> yes, me too, Mr. Holmes. Well, I must be off. Thank you so much for your assistance. Before you go, Gregson, do you have the other victims' names? Oh, thank you for reminding me. Here they are, Mr. Holmes, along with the dates of the murders. I'll slip them right inside your notebook. I would appreciate it, Inspector. No doubt they will prove useful. Always thinking, Mr. Holmes, always thinking. Hello and welcome to the final case. This is the case of the Thames murders. Now, this one was originally giving me some problems as we have to solve five murders in seven moves. But thankfully, the moves that we need to make give us a lot of information. Now, to start with, in our notebook, the victims' names are already in the place. But we won't really be needing to visit many of them. One of them, maybe? So, the introduction tells us that there has now been a fifth murder, and that is Roland Jacquard. A card player, a bit of an unsavoury character, and someone who spends his time at the Bagatelle Club. But before we go anywhere, let's take a quick look at the newspaper. And the only one of relevance is June 9th. And if you look here, this is the death columns. So we now know that Nathan Ravel died on the 30th of May, as Cyril Maud did as well, so they must have died on the same night. Charles Attard is the third victim, and that's followed by Leo, Leo Shepard. On the second page, there is some more information. I will scroll down bit by bit, feel free to pause. So we know that Leo Shepard was shot. The first of the victims, which would have been Nathan Ravel, was a barrister and senior clerk from the firm of Lindsay and Co. Okay. And there is another article about the deaths here the third murder is Charles Attard another well-known London barrister and he was shot twice with a large caliber gun and it's a potential robbery so Let's go and visit the Bagatelle Club, as that is our first real lead. Nathan Ravel and Mr. Jacquard are both members at the club. Nathan and I are partners and frequently played against Jacquard and his partner, Moran. Sebastian Moran? Yes. But how well did the two of you meet their challenge? <laughs> it's hard to believe, but at first we won. <laughs> They're two of the best players at the club. But then our luck changed. We couldn't win no matter how good the cards were. Did they cheat? Cheat? Of course not. Club members are gentlemen. Did you have a wager on the game, Mr. Adair? A small one. A pound or two, nothing important. And Ravel? I don't know. 
When did you last see Ravel? The night before he died. We were playing against Jacquard and Moran till midnight. <laughs> we didn't win a game all night. Nathan seemed upset. He and Moran seemed to have a bit of a disagreement. What about the night Ravel was murdered? I had a drink here with Moran. He said he was waiting for Nathan. When he didn't show, he got upset. He waited till a little before eight and then left. He told me if Nathan stopped by to tell him to meet him at the tanker mill. When was the last time you saw Jacquard? Last night about 8.30. He'd been here since 4.30. He received a postal telegram. After reading it, he jumped from his chair saying he had unexpected business. Have you seen Morad lately? Not for the last few days. I understand he's on the continent. Okay, we've gathered a fair amount of information already. We know that Jacquard and Ravel knew each other. And Jacquard was partnered with Sebastian Moran. And we know that the night before Revel died, he had a disagreement with Moran. And of the night of the murder itself, Moran was waiting for, for Revel and was rather upset that he didn't actually show. And we also know that he left around 8pm and left a message to meet at the Tankerville, if Revel ever showed up. And Jacquard was also last seen there the night before. And we also know that he received a telegram and left as well. But let's go and visit someone who should be able to give us a bit more information, and that is Porky Shinwell, as we don't really have a lot of other leads apart from the Tankerville. We will visit there in a little while. But Porky Shinro has been helpful in the past. How did he think about the Thames murders? Well, two of the victims was regulars here. Cyril Maud and Curtis Twiggs. Twiggs? Yeah, Twiggs. The one the police identified as Leo Shepard. Twiggs and Maud were partners, a part of the Moriarty gang. Word had it that they were Moran's strong-arm boys. The Twiggs was the knife man, and Maud was a deadly aim with a pistol. Together, they made quite a mean pair. Any word on why they were murdered? No, nothing. Although, after the murder, word had it that Moran wanted to find Twiggs. No reason, but then <laughs> Moran don't have to give one. When did you last see them? The night Maud was murdered. He and Twiggs were sitting here, drinking their dinners. Around 8 o'clock, Moran comes in, talks to them, and leaves. Maud checks over his pistol. They drained their pints and dashed off. Okay, so what we've learned here is that Leo Shepard was not the victim. It was Curtis Twiggs. And that Twiggs and Maud were the stronger men of Moran. And they all work for Moriarty. So that is pretty damning in itself. And we now know that Twiggs was the knife man and Maud was a deadly aim with the pistol. And after the murder, I'm going to assume it's the murder of Maud that Moran wanted to find Twiggs. So that probably means that he is responsible for or involved with the death of Revel and Maud. And they were last seen of the night, well, last seen together, the night of Revel's murder. And that was around 8 p.m. when Moran came in, talked to them, and left. Then afterwards, Maud checked over his pistol and they both left. So that pretty much implies they were both involved with Revel's murder and Twiggs is involved in Maud's murder. But we still need to find out more about Charles Attard's murder. But before then, let's go and pay a visit to Roland Chicard. I'm usually quite fastidious, but I left everything as I found it this morning. Now that poor, poor man. Did you see Mr. Jacquard last night? No, lovey. I went home early after leaving dinner out for him and the guest, as he asked. Interesting. What is it, Holmes? A Mauser T11 and a Lafourchure pistol. Lafourchure has been recently fired. Three shots. And the Mauser? 
Not in the last day or so. Mr. Jacquard was quite the gun collector, I can assure you. Well, Watson, here we have letters of credit totaling thousands of pounds. My word. And I have merely found his wallet with 140 pounds and a recent playbill from the Elephant and Castle Theatre. Do you know who Mr. Jacquard was entertaining last night? No, I don't, Ducky. But I did see something strange this morning. The Persian mug is missing from that corner of the room. I don't know why anyone would want to steal a rug. Do you know anyone else who might be able to shed light on this? You might try nosy Mrs. Ivory next door. She's always in everybody's business. Okay, so Chicard has two guns, a Mauser T11. And even though Holmes said that it hasn't been used in the last day or so, he did not say that it hasn't been used at all recently. And the Lefacheau has recently fired three shots. But interestingly enough, he was also found with letters of credit worth thousands of pounds and a playbill from Elephant and Castle Theatre. So the only other real lead that we have at the moment, well, we now have two with the Elephant's Castle, is the Tankerville Club, which we uncovered in the first visit. So let's head there now. Do you recall if Roland Jacquard had dinner here on the evening of May 30th? He arrived at 7.30 p.m. and was joined by Mrs. Kathleen Lindsay. He ordered a bottle of Gros Le Rose, 76, to accompany the duck. Uh, I'm not interested in what they ate, but I am curious to know when they left. They left at midnight. Did anyone else join them? Colonel Sebastian Moran at 9.10. He had one drink with them and left at 9.45. Was that the last time you saw Jacquard? No, 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 no. The last time I saw Mr. Jacquard was June 1. He spent most of the afternoon in the game room, came into the dining room around 8.30. He had dinner alone and left at 9.30. Thank you. This has been most illuminating. Okay, and even though that was pretty detailed, the only information that we really need to get from this is that Jacquard had dinner with Kathleen Lindsay. And I guess Moran arriving at ten past nine would have been some kind of alibi for him. But still there's no root beat there's been no real mention of a tard, so hopefully Kathleen Lindsay will be able to shed some light into the, these matters. This has all been very difficult. You see, I knew three of the victims. Charles, Charles Attard was my solicitor, Roland Jacquard a friend, and Nathan Revelle worked for my late husband's firm, Lindsay and Company. For the life of me, I can't imagine why anyone would want to kill them. Did the victims know one another, Mrs. Lindsay? Roland and Charles were friends. In fact, Roland introduced me to Charles. I suppose Charles must have met Ravel when he went to the firm to handle my business affairs, but he never mentioned it. I don't think Roland knew Ravel at all. I can't imagine how he would. So it seems like Attard, Jacquard and Revel all seem to know each other in certain ways. Maud and Twigs obviously work together. And are now both dead. Well, the other three are dead as well, I suppose. So, let's go and visit Elephant and Castle. That's the last real lead that we have to follow at the moment. And see if we can uncover more about Jacquard's death. Roland Jacquard was here last night. He picked up Letitia. How serious was the romance between Miss Garcia and Jacquard? Well, not as serious as Jacquard would have liked. <laughs> Letitia is a fun-loving girl. She has lots of admirers, and uh, she knows how to take advantage of it. Do you know who else she was taking her fun with, so to speak? Well, there are three who come to mind. Jacquard, who I guess we might say he's no longer in the running. Marco Escobedo, the pugilist, who seems particularly smitten with her. And Celesta Ogilvy, who is rather a strange bird. Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill Jacquard? No, sir. I've been studying drama all my life, but I only watch it, mate. I don't write it. Now, this is where things get interesting, as... If we go to the newspaper here, obviously it's now June 9th. The original deaths happened, well, the original murders happened 30th of May, 1st of June and 3rd of June. So this one seems to have happened 
almost a week after the fourth murder. And if we go here, we can see an article article about Marco Escobedo. And it's about their boxing match. That will be happening very soon. But we find out that Escobedo has been... Oh, wait a minute. Well, yes, he has been training. But he has also been having a lot of excessive nightlife with Letitia Garcia, who Jacquard was seeing the night before his murder. And the gentleman at the Elephant and Castle has informed us that Garcia has lots of admirers and she has fun with it as well. We now have finished with our interviews. We're going to need the Irregulars and we're going to send them to H.R. Murray, who will be able to tell us more about their murders. Funnily enough, I thought it would, it would be Meek, but no, it's Murray. So the first case is Nathan Revel. And it seems like he was killed with a single slug from a mouse at T11. And a suicide note saying, basically apologizing for stealing some money. But obviously it wasn't suicide as he was shot in the back. And we know that Maud, on the night of his death, was carrying a pistol. Now, Cyril Twiggs, otherwise known as Leo Shepard, is the third murder. He was killed with two bullet holes. Oh, shot in the back. And he was killed with a French pistol, which I'm going to assume is the Lafachot which would imply that Jacquard was the killer. And Cyril Maud II's case was killed with a stiletto type knife. And that would imply twigs. So we know so far that Ravel was killed with a Mauser T11. Maud was stabbed and a tard. Wait a minute. Let's get back to Leo Shepard. Atard was killed with two shots at very close range from a mouse at T11. So we can only assume from this is that even though Twiggs is a knife man, after killing Maud, he took the mouse at T11 and killed Atard with it. And we can only assume that Roland Jacquard got the mouse at T11 from Twiggs. And Atard owned a pepper box, which is an interesting little gun. The gun fires shots like one removed from Shepard's shoulder. Let's go back to Leo Shepard's. The third, there was a third bullet from a wound received a day earlier, not the type ordinarily used in a murder attempt. So this pretty much implies that Shepard killed Atard, and Atard fired back. And because he is a knife man, he wasn't very well trained with the pistol. And let's go on to Roland Jacquard. And this case is different as he was strangled. He wasn't shot or stabbed. And that is that. So I believe we have enough now to take it to the judge. Hear ye, hear ye. The Queen's Court stands in order. 
I understand you're ready to unravel the Thames murders. A terribly complicated case, indeed. Uh, tell me who murdered Nathan Ravel. Uh, please choose from either your notebook or the directory. Well, we know that Ravel was shot. And we know that Revel and Moran had a disagreement the night before. Moran was waiting for Ravel at the Bagatelle Club and waited until 8 p.m. And shortly after 8 p.m., Moran arrived at the Raven and Rat and spoke to his strong arm boys. And after speaking to them, Maud was seen checking his pistol and left with twigs. So we can only assume that they were ordered to kill Revel. And the one who actually ended up killing him was Cyril Maud. Positively correct. Now tell the court why did Maud murder Ravel? It must have been an order from Moran as Moran ordered them to in the Raven and Rats. So, Maud was merely a henchman. Now, who put an end to his unsavoury life? And we know this is Twigs, as Twigs is the knife man. Excellent deduction. Now, why did Twigs kill Maud? Well, no, that I don't think that would be the Moriarty gang way. And I don't believe it was an order by Sebastian Moran. And we know that Revel had a, had a suicide note apologising for taking money. So, Chicard ended up with these letters of credit or securities. He must have taken them from Twig. So, I can only assume right now that under Moran's orders to kill Revel, Twigs decided to be greedy and take the money for himself. Brilliant reasoning. Now tell the court who murdered Charles Attard. Again, Twiggs ended up with the Mauser T11 and he used it on Attard. We don't really know a lot about Attard. Twiggs was a busy and brutal man, wasn't he? Tell me, why did he do it? Again, I don't believe that Twigs would be turning people over to Scotland Yard. We don't know anything about a successful, ro successful robbery or that he was ordered to, to by Moran. But we do know that Twigs sustained a injury and he did that while killing Atard. So Atard must have fired first. I suppose Attard was no match for Twigs in a gunfight, but clearly someone was. Tell the court who finally murdered Curtis Twigs. Well, Twigs was murdered with a French gun, and we know that Roland Jacquard owns a La Facho, and he ended up with the mouse at T11, and with these letters of credit as well. Superb deduction. Now, what was Jack Card's motive? So we know that on the 30th of May, when Jacquard was having dinner with Kathleen Lindsay, he was joined at the table by Moran. So we have to assume that Jacquard was also under the influence or working for Moran. We don't know anything about the relationship between Twiggs and Letitia Garcia. We know that she was linked to several people, but not him. Again, turning people over is not part of the gang's policy, I guess. And uh, I doubt we know that they were friends as such. 
but it's more likely that he was there to retrieve the embezzled securities as they were in his residence. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Now please tell the court who murdered Roland Jacquard. And the only real answer we can get from this, I mean, Moran could have been the one, but he's more of the person to get other people to do his dirty work for him. We know that Jacquard was seeing Letitia Garcia, and she has lots of admirers, and she's been partying lots with Marco Escobedo, who is a well-known pugilist. And Jacquard was, was strangled. So this one is pretty much a case of simple jealousy. Bravo! Now, what was Escobedo's motive? We don't know anything about the plot. I doubt it was anything to do with the, with the embezzled securities, and there's no links to Moran with Escobedo. We can only assume it is this one here. Exemplary work on a most difficult case. The court is recessed. Until next time. An extremely difficult case and your score is absolutely perfect. I'm quite sure we could not have done any better. And there we have it. That is the last case. I was expecting this case to be an absolute headache. And I know people in the threads have pieced this together perfectly. But I tried to use my own notes with the link, well, the only leads provided. I hope I have provided an adequate explanation. But that is it. This Let's Play is over now, unfortunately. There is... I will see you again soon. Let's go and see Holmes's solution. Well, Holmes, you've done it again. I believe we've done it, Watson. Oh, yes. <laughs> but the twists and turns of this one still puzzle me. W would you mind... Uh... Elaborating? Mm. Not at all. Nathan Ravel was a simple, hard-working fellow whose one passion became his undoing. Twist? Indeed. Once he began to play with the likes of Moran and Jacquard, his fate, I'm afraid, was sealed. Do you suppose he was cheated? out of his money and his life. You see, by cheating Ravel at the card table, Morad was able to force him to participate in his scheme to embezzle from Lindsay and company. And once he had Ravel under his thumb, he enlisted Charles Attard, who was Mrs. Lindsay's lawyer. Through him, he was able to gain access to the firm's confidential records, and thus he had all he needed to execute his embezzlement scheme. I suppose Mr. Ravel's suicide note would suggest he had a change of heart. Precisely, Watson. And on the evening he was to take the embezzled securities to Moran, Ravel wrote that suicide note and left the documents in his room for Patterson to find. So that's how Maud and Twiggs fit in? Yes. Moran sent them to kill Ravel and retrieve the stolen securities. Maud, the gunman, shot Ravel and he and Twiggs dropped the body into the Thames. But holding £6,000 was too much temptation for Twiggs. He killed Maud, took the securities and the Mauser T-11 and went into hiding. So, then a Tard went looking for Twiggs. And unfortunately for him, he found him. Twiggs killed him with the gun he'd taken from Maud. What made you first suspect that it was your car that finally put an end to Curtis Twiggs? I knew from the moment we discovered the securities, the Mauser and the Lafo show at Jacquard's home. It all fit together, an all too common tale of dishonesty and betrayal. The only thing that didn't fit was the death of Roland Jacquard. I suppose if he'd been killed for the securities, we wouldn't have found them on his desk, would we? Very observant, Watson. You see, this was a death due not to his criminal intrigues, but to his romantic intrigue with one Letitia Garcia. There was another man who believed she belonged to him. Marco Escobedo? Yes. I've always thought it would be rather risky to become romantically involved with the lady friend of a pugilist. Words to live by, Watson. I shudder to think what happened that night. It is a grisly thought. Because after Jacquard murdered Twiggs and brought Miss Garcia back to his home, and into his bedroom, I might add, they were interrupted by Escobedo. Judging by the clothing strewn about the room, poor Mr. Jacquard must have been in the nude when Escobedo attacked and murdered him. That would explain the skivvies. Or lack thereof. Escobedo must have quickly dressed the body, not showing the same care as the fastidious Jacquard. 
He then rolled the body up in the bedroom rug and dumped it into the Thames. An ironic resting place, to be sure, since he knew nothing of Jacquard's involvement with the other murders. Positively brilliant, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. And there we have it. Holmes, as always, explains it a lot more succinctly than I, than I ever could. But this is it. This is the end of the Let's Play. Thank you for everyone involved. I will see you again soon, hopefully. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.